Hi, it's Wednesday. I have staff meetings starting in 15 minutes for the rest of the day, and then I'll get to hopefully rest or do yoga tonight after everything is done. Happy hump day, happy midweek. I recorded something last night or in the afternoon because my emotion had changed from morning to afternoon, and then it even changed from afternoon to evening. Part of the reason for recording was just to clarify that we have different emotions throughout the day. Also, the emotion I had in the afternoon was anger. I was mad about something that didn't happen in that moment, but something that kind of bubbled up when I gave myself space to start reflecting on the past couple of days, weeks, just things. Things that happen in life and we kind of just store them away, store them away, store them away. And then sometimes when there's space to breathe, things come up. So I'm probably going to use this intro and then shift over to the uh, video I recorded yesterday about anger. Hi. So it's still Tuesday. Recording number two for day number two, week four. And I am recording this because I want to clarify that emotions change throughout a day. Today I was running some errands in the afternoon between meetings and as I was in the car, I just started feeling this like flood of anger, like anger, like so mad. And I don't know if anyone else does this, but when I'm in the car, I talk to myself. I love it. And I was in New York for years and did not have a car. And so there was like nowhere to really go to express anger, especially. Like there's nowhere to go that is acceptable. And I mean, I have heard of a few places where you can reserve a room and like smash old electronics with a bat or something. You know, you got to really plan that out. I think we all have anger at different times and we can't just reserve a room and smash electronics. And so we see this in the world that people don't know. Adults don't know where to go with emotions, especially an emotion like anger. It's so big and it's so socially unacceptable that it is deemed as negative and bad and we shouldn't have it. We should not be angry. I think that it's interesting that this emotion came up while I was driving because when I was sitting still at home in bed, I was like loved and comfortable, right? These are the words that are coming up. But when I'm in motion, when I'm actually moving somewhere, even just in the car, this feeling like starts, like these feelings start kind of rising to the surface and this anger, it surprised me, came up and I started just like, going into it, not being afraid of it. Like, yeah, that made me mad and this made me bad. And when they sent me this message and she said this, this made me mad. And then I started kind of like role playing. Like if I could say what I really wanted to say in that moment to this person, what would I say? And I started saying it out loud and it's still kind of stirring in me. While I was on my errands, I realized that like I do not have a journal right now because I used my whole journal from last time, um, which was this one, which is when I started uh, these Make With Jay mornings, Be a Nice Human. If this is not a sign that like anger is not okay in society, hmm, you know, I'm looking at this from a different perspective today. like. Be nice, but where do we put our anger? It's okay to be angry. There's lots of reasons to. So anyway, I'm on my last page of this journal and I realized <gasps> I need a release. So when I was out today, I found another journal and this one is beautiful. And it says step out. And this is also aligning me to what I feel like I need to do next. So I think part of my anger and I need, I need to write, I need to write this out. But if I really go into why I'm so angry, it's because I feel like it's really hard to be yourself in society. There's always an expectation 
of who you are supposed to be in different settings. And that expectation sometimes keeps us like netted in. Maybe the expectation is because that's who we were. At one point when we met these people and we hung out with them, that's who we were. But we grow and we change. Remember my painting with the leaves and the heart and me coming around to the idea of pink and red? Like we grow and we change. And we need to be able to have relationships that allow for that growth. Not only allow for it, but embrace it and say, yes, go for it. Grow into your next season. I'm not holding you back. I am not roping you in with this net. You grow. You grow. <laughs> I actually work for a company called You Grow Girl, so I don't know if maybe I'm just like drinking the Kool-Aid, but it's good Kool-Aid. So I have a few tools that I want to share, and I've already shared um, one with you, but I did a question this morning, a question and answer from Create Your Own Calm, which I showed you before. And this is just an easy one, but I think this is what like prompted my feelings of anger. But um, in on this page, it says, if you dare nothing, then when the day is over, nothing is all you will have gained by Neil Gaiman, the graveyard book. And the questions were, um, write down three big dreams you're afraid of pursuing, which fear is keeping you from pursuing each one, and what action will move you past this fear. The other piece that I wanted to go into was talking about this idea of oracle cards. The decks that I pulled from this morning are The Universe Has Your Back, which is a Gabby Bernstein deck. Just one note on oracle cards today because I could go on and on and I probably will in the future is that I believe that we always come across messages in various ways, whether it's a movie we watch, a podcast, a book we're reading, a friend that we have a conversation with and they say a line or a word and you're like, whoa, that was exactly what I needed to hear. That's what these are to me. That's what these are. Um, these are just ways to connect with ourselves on a deeper level, but also in a really simple way. So pull a card in the morning, pull a card if you're feeling a little lost, and just reflect on what comes up when you read it out loud. And I also bring this up because my third kind of transition in emotions yesterday had to do with having two of my friends and Pratt colleagues over for dinner last night and then we pulled cards um, with another one of our friends virtually and it was just a fun experience um, and part of the reason it's so fun is because there isn't a hesitancy around it from these girls like we're all just like yeah let's see what the universe has for us today. And then the other piece is that things come back again and again. These messages sometimes come back. Messages. What do you do with messages? Whether they come from a card deck or they come from a friend. There's different ways that we get repetitive messages in our lives. It's also called synchronicities often when things are repeated. And, um, and it's funny that sometimes we have a bias. Like it's okay if we get that from a friend or a film that someone made, but it's not okay if we get that from an Oracle deck. So where is that bias coming from? And is that necessary? Messages are messages, right? And if they're leading us down the right path for ourselves, if they empower us, if they inspire us, if they keep us kind of on track around who we are and what we're here to do, then is it negative? Mm, okay. Anyway, those are some thoughts that I'm going to leave you with. And I'm also going to journal in my new journal. Step out and continue to follow this message. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. Let me know what's going on with you and your emotions and your feelings. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing your art and hearing from you soon.